Welcome back to Psychonauts. Let's jump right into the level revisits. Next up is Lungfishopolis. Gargalore! Hey, shouldn't this place be much quieter now that Kochamara is gone? Well, there's still some crazy Navy guys who haven't realized that the war is over, but we got them on the run, I think. Got some really aggressive flyers at the printer right now. Should sway popular opinion our way in no time. So you don't mind if I smash up some more tanks and planes and stuff? Gargalore, you may smash it all. This whole area is scheduled for reforestation. Cochamera built this city for us. Lungfish weren't meant to live in cities. Well, okay then. I'll bet I can save you a bit on the demolition costs. Yeah, go nuts. You can squish people too if you want. My family lives in a whole other town. So it's a quick explanation of why continuing to destroy everything and everyone on our path is acceptable. Not that we really need it. We're big and we can break stuff. It uh, gets rebuilt every time we revisit the levels, so it's not like we're helping them all that much. But I'm not even going to spend a lot of time here, because I know exactly where the figment I missed is. It's really early on. And once I've got it, I can just leave the level. It's kind of embarrassing how close I was to 100% in most of these levels. Man, the... I'm ready. So, moving on from there, we're back to our own mind. Or the first time it was combined in some strange way with Coach Oleanders. And one figment that I missed. Now, the funny thing is, the first time, it was just Coach Oleander's psychic influence, rather than, as it is now, the two brains actually kind of merged into one. I kind of wanted to show you how you actually get up to the upper ledge here, and there's the figment. Since it goes to the upper ledge, I figured, rather than waiting down here, where I have no idea which part of this area goes through, since I wasn't paying much attention, it ends up being faster for me to go up to that ledge and wait for it there. Faster is kind of a relative term here. And it's on its way. And I miss it again. Stupid brambles. I don't really know where it goes after that point, but I think you can finally see why I said you don't want to miss one of these figments because they're really annoying to get later. The yellow running men ones. I'm ready. Actually, I don't even know what that figment's supposed to look like. So moving on, Mia's dance party. There's no cutscene here. We already saw the one that Mia gives us when she's first been kidnapped, and she doesn't have anything new to say at this point. But on this ledge is a figment that I noticed while I was doing the editing run. There was a couch under it, which I destroyed. The figment just kind of stayed there. And for some reason, I thought this was about as far as you could get in the level in this section, so I kept going back and looking for the figment that I'd missed. Then I remember there's a whole other section after that door. And once I went there, the other figment I was missing was evident almost immediately. Like so. So that's all the figments in this section. Now we move on to the race, and I remember where this one was. I also saw this while I was editing. But I figured... Okay, it's ready. Why not show you Get how set, the race goes go, baby, go! 
when you're doing a normal run and not taking the upper paths. This is actually probably the most interesting way that you can do the race. Yeah, the upper paths seem like they're slightly faster, but then you skip all the obstacles below. And there's the figment. Again, I like to get all the figments when I'm doing the race the first time because it's really easy to just lose to Bobby and get reset to the top without having to use the teleport worms to go back. When there's no competition, you're always in first, which means as soon as you cross the finish line, you're on to the next section. And here's the spot where you jump through the gates and open the walls ahead of you. There are a couple of more of those. I skipped them when I was doing the race before, obviously. If you hit something, it slows you down a bit. Usually not too much. You can get up to speed quickly again if you go through one of those gates. And I'm gonna skip the tube that crisscrosses the track and is full of sensors. So I can show you the lower path here. And then I still managed to jump over half of it. One more ramp. Usually you'll want to be going faster, but all you gotta do is actually clear that gate there and the path to the end is open. You did it! You're quick like greasy lightning! So that was a pretty so terrible run. You, if Bobby were still here, he would have beaten me on that. So the final room. I missed a whole bunch of figments, and there's one of them now. There are plenty of them hovering around in this updraft, I guess. And it's also a good perspective just to see the rest of the room so I can figure out where the things I missed are. There goes a figment. Unfortunately, it kind of goes above the top of the updraft. And since it's a moving one, I don't know where the rest of its path is. So I gotta keep spotting it, trying to get over to where it is, missing it, and then trying to catch sight of it again. This room is incredibly annoying. And eventually I just find a spot where I know it passes through and wait for it. I have very little patience. And then I just happened to bump into it by accident. Okay, not complaining. That's everything that I can see in this section. I know there are a bunch over in this room that I didn't get, largely because they're annoying to get while Mia's still here. If you land on the platform that she's on, obviously the level ends. So you have to kind of grind those rails on the side to get to some of the figments. And then you gotta jump over to these platforms, which really look like they're just decoration at first. Well, I'm sure they are decorative, but they've also got figments on them, and if you want to get 100%, you need to collect them. It's not particularly difficult, although these are likely some of the hardest levitation jumps in the game. And I didn't quite get up to the top of that one, but there's a figment right there. That one is really easy to miss, because you got to get up to the top of the room and then look down. So we'll try going up the other side this time. 
See if I can get up to that highest ledge, since there is a figment on it. And grab all the ones on this side of the room along the way. Jerk! Oh no, you didn't just try to touch me. Whoa! Hey, this ain't the mosh pit, frat boy. No, oh, there was a figment down there next to the jump pad. Looks like it's another moving one. I just gotta wait for it to move back this way. And make sure that I can see when it does. There it goes. Alright, so, proceeding up the right side of the room again, grabbing all the figments along the way. Not too many more than I need. But obviously, if nope, you're going through the game the first time, eye, man. I'm in my groove place. your figment count in this area is going to be surprisingly low. Until you realize where all those missing figments are. At least it always was for me. Unless I'm actually going for 100%, I don't usually take the time to stop and look around at everything and notice things like this entire room, really. It's just, oh, Mia's right in front of me, so I'll go and complete the level. One of the most important things about this room is you can stand on those red door-like things in the background. And sometimes you kind of need to do that. Like here, the only way I know of to get to the last figment up on top of this room is to stand on top of this door and then make the jump up onto that flower platform. It's really tricky. And then from here, you got a tough jump over to that flower. And once again, I'm pretty sure I've got everything in this room, but I'm still one figment short. So, back to the other room. Where with a keen eye, I notice the other figment floating in the updrafts over at the far side of the room. Once again, the hardest part of this whole thing is actually tracking its movements so that I can actually catch it. But there's another tricky part yet to come. This grind rail! I can't jump from the grind rail to the updraft. No idea why. I tried so many times. I finally just had to ride off the end of the thing and jump to it from another ledge. And as a result, I just missed the figment again. This game is not particularly fun to 100%. There are worse. I've 100%ed Donkey Kong 64 a number of times. But there's just something about this one that's really aggravating. But I got the figment. I'm going to celebrate my success by dancing. People wanted to see the idle animations for some of the levels. I've shown a couple of them during the actual gameplay videos. This one goes a lot longer than most of them. I don't think anybody wanted to see me stand around for quite this long while I'm actually going through the levels for the first time and training in levitation. Now's a good time to dance. Alright, I think that's about enough dancing. Man, these things smell. I'm ready.
So next up, Waterloo World, we're gonna skip. Because I missed a whole bunch of figments there. Boy? Not much to do here, except... Yeah, I already got everything here, so the only thing left to do is talk to Boyd. Hey, Boyd, why are you trying to burn down the asylum? I am the milkman. My employer has commissioned me to deliver this milk to whitewash what went on here. I make sure no evidence is left of anything except for milk. I cannot rest until I have made my final delivery. Well, now he's already done that. Why are you trying to burn down milk? I am the milkman. My employer has commissioned me to deliver this milk to whitewash what went on here. And I can't get back into the house. There's nothing left for me here. We must make final delivery. People gotta have their milk. Although I can still be set on fire. Can't even interact with the one car that remains. I am a skilled phone repairer. I am a skilled phone repairer. So, let's get the heck out of here. Man, these... And I'll see you next time for Waterloo World.